Welcome back to Citadel Station. Today is the sixth day of November, year 2072. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Daniel, and today we're going to be doing more of the security level. It's going to be great. If you weren't uh, around on Friday, um, when Stephen was supposed to be doing his stream, I covered for him and I was doing a little bit of the security level there. So, if you supposed didn't see... Supposed to be. Yeah, I guess a little <laughs> bit. So, um... Yeah, I filled in for him and I got a ton of the security level uh, blocked out already. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't able to join us on the uh, on the Friday, you're going to see um, what we've been up to. But yeah, um, there's no Carly today. Carly is very busy with other things, but I do have a very, very handsome and nice gentleman. Say hi, Steve. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because he pays me. Okay, let's get straight to it with some blockout stuff. So, hope you guys had a great weekend. 
Um, it was yet another scorching weekend here. I think it's now day 16 of continuous sunny weather without a cloud in the sky. So it has just been absolutely crazy here. So let's get right to it. We did all of this area. I had to go back through and annotate some things, but let's carry on with some block out because that's far more interesting. Yes, I'll be reading chat. Yep, Steve. Will, yep, Steve will be helping out doing some doing some busy work and uh, reading chat. I'll be reading chat as well, but I will be concentrating on doing what I was supposed to be doing. So yeah, we built this little ramp here, and this is where we left off. I'm just gonna add a little text annotation here. Saying that there is one cyborg assassin right there. So, Daniel. Yes? Have you been watching World Cup football? I certainly have. I couldn't believe that um, Portugal got knocked out. It was absolutely crazy. Um, and Argentina. Oh, Argentina got knocked out. Yes, they did. Um, man, there's all sorts of upsets going on right now, but we want England to stay in. We want England to stay in and hopefully win it. <laughs> I was uh, just watching the Belgium-Japan game, and uh, ah. oh, my God, I don't know if I should spoil it or not. If you plan on watching Ooh, it. Ooh, I might watch the highlights, actually, so no. No, 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 no. No, okay, bad. you're gonna. It's uh, it's unbelievable. Let's just put it at that. Oh, okay. Intrigue. And then, um, uh, who played this morning? Was um, it Mexico versus Brazil? I'm not. That's quite it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm. And Brazil stuck it to him. So North America is officially eliminated <laughs> from contention. <laughs> Um, you, USA didn't even qualify, did you? We did not. Probably because I wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Who's the manager for America? We should tell him to get you. Well, I mean, just having the last name Kick, I think, automatically qualifies you for just about every tournament. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got a we got a question right away here from right. Tim Kelp. Uh, I had a question last week that I asked everyone in general, but Carly said would be a great question for you. Have you heard about the legal troubles the creators of Star Control are in, and how they're crowdfunding money for legal fees? Uh, yes. Um, so our head of business development, Larry Cooperman, worked at Stardoc uh, for years and years and years. Um, <clears throat> directly with uh, Brad Wardell. And um, so we're kind of acutely aware of what is going on, um, as well as uh, we do have uh, a bit of a relationship with the the original creators of Star Control as well. So uh, we've kind of heard from both sides. Um, but uh, essentially what has been said in uh, some of the articles that have been put out recently about the whole controversy, it's, it's, that's pretty much the story. Um, they're contending that uh, they, they own all the rights to the game, all the, the characters, uh, the universe, the lore, the story, all this, and that um, Atari essentially didn't have the rights to sell to Stardock during that uh, bankruptcy auction. Um, and honestly, that's probably the case. Uh, we've we've dealt with Atari a couple times before. Um, we Night Dive was actually a verified bidder in that auction. Uh, we didn't bid on um, Star Control, uh, but we were going to try to get the the humongous titles, uh, which we ended up working with anyways. Um, but some of those uh, assets that they did have um, and that they did sell um 
we didn't know and they weren't able to verify in time whether or not they actually had all the rights necessary to sell. Um, so that might actually come up um, if they can raise the funds to defend themselves uh, in court or litigation or whatever uh, phase they are right now. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting predicament they're in. I love how this has already turned into a let's ask Stephen all the scary legal questions that Daniel and Carly dare not answer <laughs> or even talk about. Um, yeah, well, some of this stuff is, is really interesting if you get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, I know the one article that's out, I'll see if I can find it, is pretty lengthy and it's got a lot of uh, interesting information, but um, we haven't dealt with anything like that um, that I can think of where, I mean, there was, okay, I'm not, I'll, I'll share this. Um, <laughs> we, we did buy some assets from a bank um, that had acquired some, some assets from a claim. And um, uh, we, when we released uh, D the game, um, a company came to us after its release and said, hey, actually, we own the rights to that. And uh, we shared our information. Um, it turned out that they actually did have the rights and that we um, we bought uh, uh, just some assets that were kind of loosely related. And so we, we worked together at that point um, to keep that game out there. Uh, but that's just like one small kind of example of what can happen with some of these old games. Um, I mean, System Shock 2 was a mess for a long time. Like the rights, was. rights to stuff can get split across many different companies when companies go sort of bankrupt and all the assets get swapped around. You know, companies say, oh, I'll buy a piece of this. And another company says, oh, I'll buy a piece of that. And then it all kind of gets lost in the mix sometimes and just it just becomes a gigantic mess. Yeah, especially with, yeah, with System Shock 2, um, Electronic Arts held the trademark rights for years and years and years after Looking Glass went out of business. And uh, the insurance company that acquired all the assets from Looking Glass owned everything else. And so neither company could really do anything with the Shock franchise until they had uh, both of those things, both the copyright and the trademark. Um, and so when... Um, Electronic Arts let the trademark lapse. That's when we kind of approached Star Insurance and said, "Hey, we can commercialize this for you, and now you can acquire the trademark legally and um, and hold on to it because you'll be making you know money off the sale of the game." And so we kind of just hit it at the right place at the right time with that. Um, Darth Jam X says, "Are there any games in the NDS library you own completely, besides System Shock?" Uh, yeah, there's a couple. Um, we own a game called Machines Wired for War. Uh, yeah. We own Forsaken. Um, what else do we own? I know we own some other things. Metal Fatigue? Metal, uh, yeah, mostly. We do owe a, a small royalty to um, to somebody on that. Um, so it's, we don't get... We don't own it outright, but we we can do things with it now uh, with it more or less without permission from anybody else. Um, I have just spotted something I'm going to have to make a change to because there is a paper thin wall and we can't be having those. So I'm going to have to alter the layout of this room ever so slyly, but no one's going to really care because it's a storage room. Um, there's another question here. Uh, Devour Mistress is saying, uh, so the rights of System Shock are now shared between Night Dive and Other Side, right? Um, not exactly. Uh, Night Dive has licensed the use of the System Shock trademark to Other Side um, so that they can create System Shock 3. But System Shock belongs to us. Um, Rixie Sticks, who <laughs> I know, 
Do you want to know the story behind uh, Jazz Jackrabbit? <laughs> um, which we didn't acquire. Um, and we didn't have anything to do with the re-release. But we did have some conversations with Epic Games about um, uh, bringing back that game, uh, Jazz Jackrabbit 2, uh, Pinball, and uh, I think one other game that we wanted to put up on Steam for them, and GOG. And uh, yeah, they basically just said, oh, we'll do it ourselves eventually. Uh, but that was like four years ago. So it took them at least that long to uh, work out a deal. And I still don't believe that uh, any of it has made its way to Steam yet. And, uh, I, you know, they're just they're probably just way too busy and focused on uh, Fortnite to to really do anything with that. Let us do it. Let us do it. I know. Well, the the funny thing is, back then we didn't really have a connection with uh, Epic like we do now. Like we know all those guys because you know we're using the Unreal Engine, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I had a friend who had done a custom transformer for Cliff Blazinski because uh, he's a really big Transformers fan, and I was a part of that like Transformers modding community or. Uh, customs community years and years ago and so that's how I got to know Cliff and uh, he helped us with the initial introductions of uh, talking about Jazz Jackrabbit because he was the, the designer behind that it's kind of cool nice Jazz Jackrabbit's on GOG right now I love the music for that game the both of them actually the music is really 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 good it still sounds very... So if you played the first Unreal and Unreal Tournament, the music sounds very Unreal-like before Unreal came along. It's kind of very strange hearing that style of music in a game that isn't Unreal. But it's the same composer. Um, I forget his name, so I'm not going to attempt it. But, um, yeah, same composer did the music for that. One, two, three... Um, this is a really funny question. <laughs> Darth Jam X says, do you and your employees have the ability to legally add any game in your NDS library to your personal collection, or is that like embezzling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we explain how that works without breaking Steam's uh, <laughs> agreement? Oh, uh, well, is he talking about uh, digital copy or a uh, physical copy because for physical stuff like basically when we when we get a game and we want to do something with it thank you um i'll buy the physical edition so that we can um you know scan in documents or manuals or get some of the box art or something like that and so that's a that's a purely business expense and then that goes into our uh library of games which is you know, at this point, 99% of it is, is belongs to Night Dive. Hmm. Um, I love doing that. My, um, my co the, the copy of Terra Nova that's on Steam is the same copy that I ripped from my disc, <laughs> which is really, really cool. Sorry, just uh, thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, that that's happened a couple of times. Yeah, System Shock uh, Classic. Is also a rip from my copy. Um, Strife is as well. Um, oh, yeah, I believe that. Turok, Turok 2 is. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, it's just really cool. You can say, oh, this, this is the copy that's on Steam. Just purely for bragging rights. Let's see, mate. 200 so we can make a funky roof ceiling I mean and before somebody asks yes that is Spyro OST that you hear in the background I have somebody ask all the time spinny spinny Uh, Dark JMX, is there any word on updating Redline to work on Windows 10? Uh, we do no, no longer control Redline. 
Um, so that is a question for, excuse me, Tomo mm. slash Retroism, which uh, we worked with to bring a lot of those older games back, but we uh, our contract ended for them, and so we, we can no longer support them unless they uh, talk to us specifically about it. So... Uh, 200, 200, right, so that room is now finished. I think this is Diego's room. Showdown, Diego, yeah, this is Diego's office. I'm surprised it's not labeled anywhere. It might not be Diego's office. I can't remember. Probably is. Okay. The cool thing is about this part is when you do outer walls, well I say outer walls, but when you do sort of like walls like this, you can see if you're doing things right by extending them all the way down to the ground. So if that block there remains flush with that angular block that I've done down here, we know we're on the right path. And it should be 1800. No, 22. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. Yes, yeah, so 22. Yep, that will fit when I move it down 200 units. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, what's through here? Oh, this is the CPU node room. Okay. Cool. So we're pretty much done with this area then once I do this. So we've got a 400 by 800 floor. Uh, Devour Mistress wants to know, did you get System Shock 2 copy when it released or did you hunt the CD down manually before it got back into market. Did, you mean, did we get a copy of the game? Uh, like a physical copy? I think that's what they're asking. Um, I want to say that... Uh, I mean, I had my original copy of the game at that point and um i think i just used the rip copy of that and then the, <laughs> the new dark patch yeah for that first release yes <laughs> alex wants to know what my favorite lacroix flavor is <laughs> <laughs> um we just had a i just didn't i just read you that meme this morning the LaCroix flavors transported in a truck near bananas hint of hint of lime single skittle dissolved in water shy <laughs> watermelon <laughs> and uh, imagine like a strawberry but with low battery <laughs> I am not f I do not know this meme at all uh, I'm have to look it up uh, third player wants to know anything new regarding acquiring the data from the beta build with original level editor. Oh, uh, you know, I reached out to those guys who had found that disc. Uh, and uh, they never wrote me back. And they were the ones that were like, hey, you guys work with System Shock. You may want this. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, how do we get a copy? And then they just ignored me. So um, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to follow up with them. 
That's helpful. Yeah. Here's a question for you, Daniel, because uh, I don't know, but Too Many Critics wants to know if we know how long the original development cycle for the first System Shock was. Ooh, it was about 18 months? Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty fast. Yeah, because they'd just done... They'd just done uh, Ultimate Underworld 2, and that was released in... Oh, my copy's out of reach. I think 1992. And, yeah. 18 months, System Shock was 1994, September 23rd, I think. So, yeah. 18 months is about right. I need to make that 800. No, not that kind of 800, you moron. There we go. Alrighty then, so we've got that room all done, apart from the roof, which I'll do now. Um, yep, 600. Now we get to document that these are CPU nodes, and I do that by placing giant big balls down. And I knew that I'd get a giggle from somebody. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do some some work here, Daniel. You're not helping. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna have to delete those balls. There we go. Copy those balls. There we go. Okay. Light the room, then we put a spotlight on the balls. Oh, Stephen must be serious. I didn't even get a giggle out of that one. Sorry, I, I'm trying to... <laughs> trying to figure this thing out with the... Uh, yeah, this thing I'm working on, it's just not working. And we color the balls pink. Okay, cool. So we get to leave this area now. After we save, obviously. Oh yeah, we should add some lights around the place. That will help. Okay, I know, probably missed some questions here. Let me see. Devour Mistress, how much of a legal nightmare was it to get System Shock legal rights that were split between owners? Um, well, the the thing was, uh, and I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, Electronic Arts was working with the uh, insurance company um, to do System Shock 3 back in like 2008? 2009, some, somewhere around there, and um, something happened. I don't, there must have been some arguments or disagreements, or I'm really not sure, but the project fell through. Um, and eventually, the trademark for System Shock just went abandoned by EA, and that's when the insurance company acquired it. And uh, that's where we kind of came into the picture and started distributing the game. Um, but uh yeah it's i actually had a conversation with um some of the ex-developers over at visceral uh when i visited ea last year and they were saying that um or they were able to confirm that dead space was the result of uh system shock 3 being canceled at ea 
So that's kind of a neat little tidbit of information, fun fact, if you will. Actually confirmed, wow. Yeah. I, mean, I need to give that game a play. I haven't played it yet. Not the first you one, not the second. Played no. Dead Space. I wow. know. I'm kind of terrible. Like, <sighs> I will get around to it at some point. Promise. Just like Star Wars, I will get around to it. Uh, move up one. There we go. So this is our uh, lift shaft, repulsor lift, so. Darth Jam says, LaCroix tastes like the only soft drink they allow in a dystopian future where no one is allowed to have emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they should uh, digitally put that into, um... Oh my God, the movie with Christian Bale where he has where he does uh, gun fu. Um, oh my God, why am I drawing a blank? Gun gun fu. Oh my God, Alex knows the movie. Um, Sounds like what's it called? Kung Fury. Oh my God, it's I have it. I own it. Why can't I think of it? It was like a Matrix clone right around the same time the Matrix came out. Oh my God, why? Uh, the one with uh, Christian Bale, where he's got the guns, and it's like post-apocalyptic future. Shit. She's <laughs> swearing too. Oh my god, I'm surprised somebody in chat hasn't said it yet. It's gotta be, um... They're not gonna say it because they want to torture you now. Uh... What's it called? Equilibrium! There it is! <laughs> Equilibrium. Oh my god. Oh, there it is. There's three people that just chimed in. Yep, that's it. They, yeah, we're going to digitally insert LaCroix into the movie Equilibrium. Um, great movie if you haven't seen it, Daniel. You, you Guess what? I haven't seen it. And I think that's got to be one of the first movies that Sean Bean dies in. <laughs> mm. You know, how he's like... He he's a in everything that he plays, he just dies. Well, I was about to say, can you name? Uh, I can name one film in which he doesn't die. Can you? Ooh, not right now. No. Uh, splat. Uh, um, let me think about that. Is it a comedy? No. <laughs> Far from it. <sighs> okay, I give up. What movie? Silent Hill. No way. Yeah. He does I've not, seen it. He does not die in the Silent Hill film. That's amazing, because almost everybody dies in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, spoil um, spoilers for Silent Hill, by the way. <laughs> if you haven't oh, seen it. Sorry, spoiler alert, but <laughs> John Dean lives. Everything's looking correct so far. Oh, I got some news. News? Some, some hot news. Well, um, spill, hot. spill the beans. Breaking news. Um, I've been told that the System Shock source port is going to be completed this month. Oh, ooh. 
Yes. Um, so that'll be nearing completion very soon. Um, very nice. Yeah, that'll be fun when that's when that's out. And uh, we should probably coordinate the release of this of the source code for that as well, on our yeah on our account. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Good, another question from Devour Mistress. Don't know if you've answered this, but Steve, what is your favorite System Shock moment, original or sequel? Um, it's going to be very cliched, but I think it's when uh, in System Shock Two when you find uh, Polito's body hmm. and uh, Shodan is revealed. Uh, what about you, Daniel? Ooh. I'm trying to think. See if I can give a different answer to that one. <laughs> I'll think about it. Can I think about it and come back to that one? Sure, you can think about it. So we got another question from Jedi00. With the game being on Unreal, what kind of work needs to be done to port it to PS4, etc.? Does most of the game export as platform agnostic? Um, that's a good question because this will be our first game in Unreal. Um, but with our in-house engine, the Kex engine, um, it's we've got it built to port to multiple platforms, uh, but we've had to add support into each one um, as we work with their development kits. Um, but for Unreal, I mean, there's I think there's a setting. Like it's under file export, or I mean, it's it looks as simple as that, where you can build the game, or maybe it's under the build menu there, where you can build it for um, Xbox or PlayStation, or I think even Switch is in there now, uh, mobile, um, PC, it j just about every platform is supported in there. But um, of course, each platform does have specific requirements oh yeah there it is yeah let's have a look android yeah, desktop yeah. html5 linux mac tvos windows yeah mm. and i think that with um the deal or the whatever it is that we have going on with with epic we've got the ability to oh yeah if you go down to target hardware i think if you click that it should all right hang on i think you should be able to select the, the target platform you want. Oh, yeah. These settings are saved in default engine.ini, which is currently writable. Optimized project settings for desktop, console, maximum quality. Desktop, console. I wonder if I click this. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing happened. We'll figure it out. Daniel, are you excited for the Spyro Reignited Trilogy? Hell yeah. I was with a friend um, over the weekend, and we played Crash Bandicoot on the Switch. And it's a great version of the game, so that just made me all the more excited for uh, when Spyro comes out. Um, I think they're going to do a really, really good job with it. Um, so, you can count me as a yes for that one. Uh, I thought I'm of it. asking, what? Oh, your favorite moment? Yeah, I thought of it. Um, it's when you go and well, the the showdown reveal is up there, but one moment that made me really. Um, Kind of like wow was uh when um you go into the shuttle bays in uh shock two and you are tasked with destroying the uh ships the many are using to escape um you destroy there there is one hangar that you can't get into it's locked 
and the, the front entrance is destroyed. But when you destroy one of the other ships, you can go into the uh, cargo bay. On Shodan uh, sends you a message just as you're walking into the, en to the entrance saying, Do not presume to go in there, insect. Um, I will not abide disobedience. And you kind of sit there and you think, Oh, you don't want me to go in there. Well, I'm going to go in there anyway. So you go in there, you loot the place, you find things, you come out, you, you find 10 cyber modules in there. And as you're walking out, um, the game says, minus 10 cyber modules. You get you get 10 cyber modules taken away, and Shodan sends you a message back saying, I hope you enjoyed your little rebellion, but don't forget what Shodan gives, she's more than able to take away. <laughs> and I kind of just sat there going, oh my god, you actually screwed with me, like, with my thing that I need to progress further. But aren't we supposed to be helping each other? And it's kind of like, even though Shodan is, in effect, helping you by staying alive, she will not be, you know, you, you will not disobey her because she will mess with you. And that that's kind of what my favorite moment from System Shock 2, I think. Is that a good answer? I hope that's a good answer. I think it's a good answer. Um, Trucky26 wants to know what operating systems the System Shock Source port is going to be released for. And at first, it'll just be PC, but um, we Windows. do have someone on our... Yeah, there will be somebody on our team that will um, be tasked with porting that probably to Linux and Mac, I'm guessing. Yeah. At some point, I think it'll be pretty important to be on all those platforms. There are development challenges with that, but we've, we're have we looking to sort it all out. And then Sega Genesis Mega Drive next. <laughs> 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 Gotta have my Mega Drive port. And that's funny you mention that, because System Shock was actually planned to be on the Mega Drive, but they cancelled it. Because the game was far too big to fit on a Mega Drive cartridge. So, yeah, just thought I'd let you know that. Oh, Alex, like, she doesn't know this question. What are some of your other favorite games outside of the library of classic games you've released? <laughs> Daniel, you should answer that. Ooh. <laughs> um, outside of our library, hmm. Uh, I'd say, oh, I'd have to pull up my Steam library. Um, I I think I finished Parasite Eve two more times than I can remember. I must have at least twenty five times. Um, I don't know why. It's just something something about that game just kind of clicks with me, um, and I just love the scary horror game with built-in RPG mechanics. Um, let's see what else. Dark Souls. Um, I sunk 200 hours into the Prepare to Die edition on the uh, on PC. Um, I can't stand those games. I want to love them, but I just can't. I hate them. Oh. Uh, let's see what else. I've, I've put over 1,500 hours into Team Fortress 2, but I haven't played it lately. Um, I suppose Sonic 3 and Knuckles is pretty epic when you think about it. It's this huge game that's has a really sort of amazing ending to it. Um, and that final battle still sticks with me where you're in space. Um, um, I'm trying to think of others. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga um, is just amazing for a 
Sega Saturn game. And it's a shame that it will never ever be re-released. Um, if you have never played Panzer Dragoon Saga and you're in the mood for a really really kind of long JRPG that doesn't follow JRPG trends um, definitely look into it because um, it's great uh, Jet Set Radio um, is another one of my favorites why they haven't re-released Jet Set Radio Future yet I don't know um, I'm trying to think of some others. <clears throat> I'm trying to get an answer for Barack the, Barack the Wicked. Uh, he says, talking about the source port, have you guys thought about adding the option for an SC55 soundtrack? And I've asked the developer about that, but I'm honestly not sure. Ooh, um, Thief. Thief 1 and 2. Um, I could sit and just listen to the ambience. The ambience in those games for hours. It, they're just so amazing. Um. Octo says, hello again, Daniel-san. Ah, hello. Hope you're doing well. Does Night Dive have the source for System Shock 2, or has that disappeared? We will be answering that question in the future. That laughter was not an answer. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Next question. Next question. Just curious, what lighting will you use for the game? Static or dynamic? I think there's a mixture of both. From what I understand. Oh yeah, this is the robot charger room. Alright, let's get this over and done with. Actually, I need to destroy you robots where you are, so I don't lose your placing. That wasn't good. Man, I forgot how many robots there are in this room. Um, I got a question, or uh, <clears throat> excuse me, an answer about the source port music. Um, uh, we are currently relying on the system MIDI output, and the user can install custom sound fonts to make it sound closer to a sound canvas or other wavetable based sound card. But we're considering giving the user different audio options in the future update, perhaps OPL emulation or even a custom sound font. So, sound fonts rock. Yeah. So there you go, Barack, the wicked. <laughs> uh, I just need to do some counting here. One sec. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. By two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 12 by 20, okay. Okay. That's the good thing about this room, it is just one big square with a whole load of little columns in the middle, so this is really easy to do.
It helps when Unreal cooperates. There we go. Just to get this little entrance way sorted out first. Actually, that's just one big wall, isn't it? Hang on. Yeah, there is nothing else in that, so yeah, that can just be one huge segment that connects to that piece. So, we will save ourselves some time by doing that. Yeah, I thought that might be a thousand. Goes up a fair ways, does that? Yeah, this level is slowly starting starting to take shape. It'll look really awesome once I light it. Um Take a quick look in our art channel, Daniel, at the uh, work that Jonathan is doing. He found a way to uh, add texture to the BSP, and he set their UV scale to the right values, and he's converted uh, <laughs> the original shock textures to use PBR. <laughs> you see wow. That? Yeah, I see that. So... Um, this <laughs> is going to be really cool. We're, we'll probably mention this in the upcoming Kickstarter update, which will be like two weeks from now. But um, the private alpha that we're going to be sharing at the beginning of September, we were thinking that there was just going to be gray box. Uh, but it looks like everything's going to at least have the original textures on it. <laughs> so that should be really cool. Um, yeah, that's that's really exciting. We weren't expecting that, but no, not at yeah, all. It'll, it'll make it so much more interesting to to play through. All right, where some more questions here? Uh, do, do, do. baby question. Oh wait, 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 wait. Can you, can we get Jet Set Radio? No, Alex. <laughs> Aren't they? Isn't that's Sega, right? Aren't they doing their own yeah. thing with that? Sega. Well, yeah, every time someone comes forward to say, "Hey, we want to do a new sequel," Sega say no because Sega hate money. You might as well just do a spiritual successor at that point. <laughs> there oh, is a so spiritual successor out there, but I can't remember for the life of me what it's called. But somebody, somebody from the team did a game about skating and graffitiing in the city that. I can't remember the name of, but it looked really cool. And oh, by the way, my opinion on Sega is purely mine, and not necessarily the the uh, um, opinions of Night Dive Studios as a company. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> no problem. Um, Alex also wants to know why we haven't gotten Lemmings or the Incredible Machine. <laughs> Lemmings. Oh, I miss Lemmings. That's a Sony property now. Was it? Wow. I think so, because they own uh, Cynosis. Yeah, but DMA was Rockstar, so I thought that would have followed them to oh, Take really? Two. Yeah, I thought. I honestly thought Take Two would have got that, because. Ah. That could be wrong. Um, Anta Family uh, asked a question, but it was already answered. She wanted to know what the what exactly is Source, and Dark Gem X answered that it's the program code of the original developers who created the game, which is correct. Yeah, the when, original Source code. 
yeah, what happens with code for a game is you have the source code and then you compile it into code which a machine can understand. Um, but by doing so, you make it so that the code can no longer be read by a person. And you can like reverse engineer, but it's an incredibly long and complicated process that is usually not worth doing, or is in a lot of places illegal. Um, so having the source code for a particular something is a huge asset, um, because with that code you can do anything. Um, you can port the game, port a software to uh, another platform, or you can add features to it, or you can put um, APIs in it, or you know stuff like that. So, if you d if you don't have the source code, you genuinely you you generally can't do that um, without some huge hackery involved. Alex is asking, with the tragic news about Harlan Ellison's passing, will Night Dive be doing anything special with "I Have No Mouth, They Must Scream" in the future? That's a very good question. Um, we really haven't had time to think about it. We've uh, been mourning the loss of Harlan Ellison and just kind of giving it time, really, before we think about doing anything with the game or consider working with it. Um, but it would certainly be appropriate at some point uh, in his memory or in his honor to improve upon it if we can or um yeah i don't know dan do you have any ideas um um not at this moment no um but it would be nice to see something happen obviously <clears throat> one two yep. three Devour Mistress has another question. Uh, how long do you think until modders enhance your remakes experience with their mods once you hmm. release? Um, let's see. Remake to modders enhance your remake. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I think that mod support was one of our stretch goals that we didn't reach. Um, and honestly, I'm not too knowledgeable of how Unreal handles modifications. Um, I believe that you would have to add some kind of support through the Unreal launcher. Like you would actually have to use the Unreal engine in order to do modifications, right? Does that seem? Um, I personally don't know. I've never worked with... I did a lot of modding for earlier Unreal Engine, but Unreal 4, I have no idea about myself. Um, but my hope is that as soon as there is um, support for it, or as soon as the game comes out, I mean, I, I would love to encourage anybody that wants to create mods for it to do so at any capacity, really. Um, we were just talking about, uh, and he's actually in here, uh, third player um the third the the underscore third player who's in the in the chat um created the first uh official or i guess i should say not official campaign for system shock one first mod campaign i don't know how else to describe it um, <laughs> fan um mission. But it, they tend fan to mission, yeah yeah, they tend like thief and system shot. They're always known as fan missions, so we can we can yeah. officially call them fan missions. All right, yeah, and that's available now. Uh, and then you can play that with System Shock Enhanced Edition, uh, which is just fantastic. Uh, the game's t 24 years old now, and yeah. it's getting its first fan mission. That's really exciting. Um, so it's great to to think that because of the source code release, we've we've enabled that. And we've, you know, and third players breathe new life into the game. Well, it's nice to see that happen. It's how a lot of people get started in the industry anyway, making fan missions for things they like. Yeah, and I think one of our plans is once the source port comes out um, and we eventually replace the enhanced edition, we'll be able to add the workshop support for it in Steam and then we can, you know, 
have that all kind of nicely put together so it's accessible. Oh boy, I see I've got to catch up here. Oh my god. The chat, the chat. <laughs> um, Tug of Law is back. Hey man. Or, or, or lady, I'm not sure. Hey person, <laughs> nice to have you join us again. Uh, has Daniel ever played Phantom 2040 for the Mega Drive? Phantom 2040. No, but I will look for it. Um, I still have my Mega Drive hooked up, um, complete with Mega CD and 32X add-ons, as well as infrared controllers. I have Phantom 2040 for the Super Nintendo. It's a good game. It's hard. But so are all the games from that mm. from that era. I'm still not bitter about you guys getting Shadowrun and Europe never got it. Just saying. I did not play that one, but I've heard it's good. Mind Robbie you, Bob Squat. Mind you, we got we got, got Alien Soldier, so kind of balances oh. out. <laughs> uh, when do you think the System Shock Enhanced Beta will come out of beta, or what pitfalls have you found with it? Oh, so we announced, I guess announced, we kind of hinted that uh, it'll be it'll be done by the end of the month, early August. And as far as pitfalls, um, I honestly haven't been kind of keeping up with the uh, bug reports that have been uh, shared with us in the Discord channel, but I know that there's been quite a few and uh, we're all very grateful for that. It's really helped um, speed up development. Yeah, it's so much better when there are, instead of just like a few pairs of eyes, there are lots of pairs of eyes. They really help. Uh, Evil's Bane 50 says that they love that uh, we are actually streaming the level building they have seen us do it a few times, but it's always very interesting to watch, so thank you. Back up. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. Predator 1. Can you get Fallout license because I want a proper single-player sequel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get right on that. I'm sure Bethesda will just hand that over. Yeah, we'll call it Fall In. <laughs> now, what's the opposite of fall? Uh, rise. Rise up. Rise? We'll call it Rise In. Rise, rise In. <laughs> I nearly said Raisin. <laughs> There's uh, a, an article that just came out today. It's a re a re publishing of an article that was in PC Gamer about how uh, people want something of like the original Fallout. Let me see if I can uh, I'll share that with chat. Yeah, I did, it in. I did see it. Somebody said uh, the way Bethesda do things doesn't make me want Fallout 5, but it makes me want an old school CRPG like that. Yeah. And I'm thinking doesn't, doesn't Wasteland fill that gap uh yeah you know i think it does but there it just wasn't fallout hmm. there was it just didn't have that same charm to it um i enjoyed it for a little while i kind of uh lost interest i didn't finish it um but it was pretty good it was good i think that um the thing that i didn't really care about was that you've got a party of people and I just sure. want to control the one the one hero, you know, with an occasional person that follows you around, like, if you want them. Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed like too much to keep track of. <laughs> um, too many critics. I feel like Night Dive... Oh, you said Night Drive. 
We, I've heard that a number of times, so that's yeah, okay. we we have we have a list of all the things that people or uh, like review people misquote our name as. I think Nightlife was my favorite one. Nightlife. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, feel like night. I almost said it. Night dive <laughs> had to reverse engineer some stuff. Like, didn't I read you guys didn't have the original source for Turok or something? Yep, that's true. Uh, when we first started working on that, we were working off of code that was being reverse engineered from the N64 version. Mm. Um, and it had come a very long way. I know that uh, Kaiser had put in an immense amount of work and it was playable, uh, but it was missing some things. Um, and so when we made <clears throat> to rock an official project of ours uh we were approached by one of the old developers who had the source code for the game and uh he shared that with us and uh Kaiser was able to implement a lot of the um a lot of the code that uh was missing from the previous project um so that saved a lot of time and it also filled in a lot of uh gaps that were missing in some in some of the logic like some of the enemy AI, that type of thing. Uh, but generally, we want to avoid reverse engineering because it's very costly and it's not a exact science. Yeah. Oh yeah, Darth JMX says Ryzen is already a game. So oh. I guess we're done. Yeah, we're done. Cancelled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rip. It's <Yeah>. over. <laughs> Rip. 2nd of July 2018 from 11 o'clock to 11.07. <laughs> Games that were cancelled too soon. <laughs> BuzzFeed article, top 10. Games that never really got a, cha a, a, a chance to shine. Oh, Underrail is a good attempt at a Fallout game. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've heard that it is. I haven't had a chance to play it, but uh, it, it's, it was in development for quite a while. Uh, it looks like it's on sale right now for 8 bucks on Steam. I do remember if you were to put the word System Shock into the um, green light search when that was a thing, uh, yeah. the first thing that came up was Underrail. Really? Yeah. Which is why I remember huh. it. Um, so I'm looking at the trailer for Underrail. You know what it really reminds me of is... Um, oh, what is that other... There's another game. Uh, something Assault? What's that game? Turn base. Final assault? No. Um... Oh my god! My friend was such a big fan of that series. Uh... Oh my god! It's gonna drive me crazy now. I can picture the box art. It basically has this guy. He looks like a Rambo-esque kind of soldier with no shirt on. He's in profile, and he's like, like falling upwards, and he's got like a machine gun and like a red bandana on. Um, <laughs> You're sure not confusing that with the first Metal Gear game. Pretty sure. Um, oh my god, what is this game? My, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm going to lose it if I can't. <laughs> wonder if somebody in chat knows what I'm talking about. Wait now. Underrail. Let's see. Jagged Alliance. Thank you. Oh, I knew it. I yeah. knew it. I, oh, thank you, Dark Jamex. You got it. Yeah, Jagged I've heard, Alliance. I've heard of that now, you say the name. It looks very similar to Jagged Alliance. Yeah, my buddy uh in high school was a 
really big Jagged Alliance fan. Jagged Alliance. All right, let me see if the box art looks exactly how I'm describing it. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, I'll show you this. Because I'm proud of myself that I could I could remember what the box art looked like, but that was it. Show me what you got. Oh, yeah, there we go. Jagged Alliance 2. Yeah, it looks very similar uh, to that. I was going to say, he doesn't have a bandana on. No, he doesn't, but the, you know, the yeah. red 2... See that mm. red too? That's, yeah. It's at bandana level. So. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'll let you off that one. It kind of reminds me of uh, Liquid Snake. Don't know why. Shirtless, blonde hair. I don't know. All right. I'm going to go back to some of these questions. Uh, Lee Goddard says, what is the System Shock Enhanced Beta mentioned above? Wasn't that the CD-ROM version from years ago? Um... System Shock Enhanced was it was the original CD version that came out in the 90s. Um, but System Shock Enhanced Edition was the version of the game that we released a couple years back that um, had mouse look. It used to be called System Shock Portable. Um, but we added a couple more features to it with the original developer, released it as System Shock Enhanced Edition. The beta that's available now is uh, the source port of System Shock, um, which we've built from the original source code um, that we received from the original developers at uh, Looking Glass and uh, Origin Systems uh, two years ago, I think. Yeah, something like that. Jagged Alliance. Uh... Darth JMX wants to know if we have a backlog of video games that you haven't even played yet. <laughs> oh my. I think everybody does. What a question. My backlog is probably like 200 games long. It's got to be. Only 200? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should make that backlog. Well, you know what my backlog is? Is my Steam library. Mm hmm. And uh, let me tell you how many games are in there. Uh, 546. So, yeah, twice as many as I originally said. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Jedi's wants to know if we want to, or if there's any chance for us to create a Shodan sound generator. So have Terry record a bunch of words and then we can piece them together when inputting a sentence. Hmm. Would make mods and fan levels seem that much more authentic. Oh, that's true. You know what we should do is uh, we should have a chat with um, Amazon and see if uh, hmm. we could get like a Shodan voice for uh, Alexa. Or like a, the Garmin GPS. <laughs> no. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And again, with the hard-hitting questions, Alex wants to know what our favorite ice cream flavors are. <laughs> Chocolate, because I'm <clears throat> kind of basic. I'm a big fan of uh, Heath Bar Crunch. I really, should okay. I really should explore more exotic ice cream flavors. Two for just 600 there. And if everything goes well, that should extend Right down to the floor, that'll be something like 2,600 now.
Ooh, close. Uh, oh, hang on. No, not even close. <laughs> Never mind. Devour uh, Mistress wants to ask a question. Don't you love when one of the original devs keeps the source code you need safely in some creepy altar in dark, in a dark cellar that's just waiting to be used again? Yes. You know, most of the time they say, oh yeah, we've got the source code, but it's on these like old magnetic disks that is some obsolete format that hasn't been used since like the 80s. And the only way to recover it is to bring it to like a specialty shop that has like a reader that can convert the data to be put on like a new hard drive or something. And uh, a lot of times the discussion ends there because they're like, well, I don't want to pay for it. And then we go, well, we'll pay for it. And then they're like, yeah, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> but I don't want to send the discs so that you can do it. And you're like, well, we kind of need the code. Yeah, uh, that's just, that's what's going on with Metal Fatigue right now. We found the code, but it's on some old deprecated format. And uh, yeah, we just need it to be converted so that we could we could update Metal Fatigue or, you know, do something fun with it. Um, Robbie Bob Squat wants to know, Dan, what's your favorite humongous entertainment game? Ooh, it would have to be because he's played them all, <laughs> all, all thirty-two. Wow, thirty-two games. <laughs> it would have to be. Why am I thinking about this so hard? Um, because they're all good. They are all. They are all good. Yeah, I'd say it would have to be. Spy Fox. Dry cereal? Uh, yeah, just because the concept is so absurd. And you get all these cool gadgets, and um, yeah, it's it's a cool game. Uh, Spy Fox is probably, yeah, if, if I were that age, I'd probably play those games over the other ones. That uh, was my favorite game. Um, I remember... I want to say, I mean, I was like an older teenager when that came out. That makes sense. Like 16, 17. Mm. And I was going to Babbage's or Electronic Boutique or one of those stores to get like Quake 2. <laughs> and uh, Quake 2 had been out for a couple of years at the time. I just wanted to get the uh, the whole you know, with the, all the add-on packs and everything. And I remember seeing Spy Fox had just come out and it was sitting there. I was like, "What the? What is this?" <laughs> I just I was so uh, captivated by the box art and I just thought it looked so cool. So I bought it and I remember just going home and tossing Quake Two on the floor and just playing Spy Fox all night. <laughs> wow, <laughs> was a, I love that game. You won't hear many people say that. I discarded Quake Two to play Spy Fox first. <laughs> Um, too many critics has Night Dive have its own IP or at least considered making one. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big, that'll be a pretty big deal when we uh, when we do an original title. Uh, but there are some kind of in early discussions. We're kind of having some some rough conversations or loose conversations about uh, what we want to do after Shock is done and. And if we want to bring um, our uh, Turok team or our Kex Engine team together with the Shock team to, to do something completely new, I don't know. We got some ideas. We got some stuff on paper about what that could be. I think um, I'm just going to speak for Dan here. I think that he would like to see a spiritual successor to Thief, like a real one. A real one, yes. Um. Oh yeah. If we don't get the rights to No One Lives Forever by then, then we should just do a. I want to do a spiritual successor to Nolf in the style of Team Fortress Two. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
Dark JMX says, shouldn't she know the answer to the ice cream question? <laughs> yeah, she should. But I like all kinds of ice cream. I, I gravitate more towards fruit flavors, like blackberry is one of my favorites. Um, let's see. Are there any details on System Shock 3 yet? What rights concessions did Night Dive have to make to allow that other name escapes me, other side entertainment company to make the game? Um, I can't really speak to the specifics of our contract, but uh, any details that are available online are pretty much the extent of what we know as well. We really haven't, we kind of uh, gave them carte blanche on what they wanted to do with it seeing as they were the original creators. Uh, we felt that appropriate. Spy Fox is okay, but it still doesn't hold a candle to Pajama Sam. <laughs> I gotta play those again. I did play them when we, when we uh, distributed them. Um, and that reminds me, I actually don't think I've got any of the humongous games in my catalog. So I have to get the, I gotta get a key for that. I do have the Spy Fox games though. All five of them. Let's see. GRTS 77. I know it is a bit out of your demographic, but have you considered at some point porting more recent games and expand the day one supported platforms? Um, that is a, a interesting business model. Um, and it is one that we have been talking about because it's generally very, very expensive and cost prohibitive to port to a console. Um, after you've done PC, especially if you're using something like Unity. Um, so, I mean, we don't really have any Unity developers anymore, um, but if somebody was using their own engine and they needed help porting to Xbox or something like that, that's something that we could probably help with. And it would be pretty profitable, I think. Um, for a lot of different reasons, but yeah, that's, I mean, something that we've thought about. Uh, right now, our resources are pretty uh, tied up in all of our projects right now. So adding another initiative like that to our, you know, to our, I guess what we do to our, <laughs> to our business would be tough. I don't even dare ask Dan to do anything um, <laughs> anymore because he's so busy. I will fall over and curl up under my desk and sob for a bit. But then I'll unless probably get an it done anyway. Yeah, unless it's an emergency, I'm like, I just, I'm like, Dan, can you? And he's like, no, busy. <laughs> yeah. I don't exactly say no, but I do say I'm busy. Uh, Dark Jamex wants to know, who would you prefer to remake System Shock 2 if you had the choice? Um, God, I would love it if Ken Levine wanted to do it. Yes. That would be amazing. I think he could, I mean, he did the first one. He did System Shock 2. He could, he could crush a remake. He, he would find ways to make it so much better. I'm, I know for a fact that, uh, if they had control of that, if we, work with them on that I'm sure there's so many things that he wanted to add in that were kind of on the cutting room floor due to budget and time constraints and it would be so cool to see what kind of things they would add uh, to that game better ending <laughs> just saying you didn't like the whole nah <laughs> <Not a fan. laughs> nah <laughs> just oh my goodness yeah, Shock's never really had great endings. 
Rathabin, how did you think Dishonored 1 and 2 did in terms of being spiritual successors to Thief? <gasps> Do we get to talk about Dishonored for a bit? We can, yeah. You oh go first. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Dishonored is... I think I have played that game about four times from start to finish. And it is absolutely amazing. Um, I love it. I think it's a great... Um, a great callback to Thief, without being Thief, in a way. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I am hoping they will announce a Dishonored 3 um, at some Did point. Did you play the second one all the way through? Yes, I, play, I played Dishonored four times, I've played Dishonored 2 three times, and I've played uh, that DLC that came out twice. Did you play as both the characters, Corvo and and his daughter in the second yes. one? Yeah. Which one did you like better? Ooh, I liked Corvo because they gave him a voice and it was essentially Garrett. Um, ah, yeah. But Emily's campaign was cool as well. I don't really have a preference. I just enjoyed what it was, and it was. It's the same levels, right? It's just different uh, I... abilities. Yeah, the, both characters have vastly different abilities. Um... I heard that Emily's was more like it was overpowered. Like it was was it easier to play as her through that? Um, I forced myself to play in a certain style, so... Ooh, where you didn't get caught? Um, yeah, uh, where I didn't get caught and I didn't kill anyone. Oh, God, that would drive me absolutely bonkers, so... I, I have, I've, <laughs> I've done way more bonkers things. I finished Thief 1 and 2 without blackjacking anybody. Ugh. Um, and then you don't even get an achievement for that, right? Because nah. that's before you, you just did it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just did it. I was like, okay, this is a challenge. I'm going to get through this ga these games without blackjacking a single person. Knock no knockouts, I... no kills. And well, in Thief Two, you have to knock somebody out. There's no, you don't have a choice. You have to knock somebody out. So, yeah, for Thief, my total when you knock somebody out in Thief. I'm such a nerd. Uh, in Thief, when you knock somebody out, you deal a total of one damage to them. And uh, at the end of every stage in Thief, you are given your stats, and it will say damage dealt. If you knock somebody out, it counts as one damage. Mm. Um, Thief Gold, I've had a damage dealt and received of zero. And of Thief 2, I've had a damage received of zero and a damage dealt of one. Do you have the screenshots to prove it? Because I'm uh, calling bullshit. I, I actually, I think, <laughs> I, I think I still have the save files. Because um, what you could do is, you could save in between levels. So I would save on every level, and there were enough save slots so that you could have all the levels in each save slot. So I saved all the levels out, so I could play the levels whenever I wanted. So I do have those saved somewhere that I can get pictures of for the next stream if no one believes me mm. well back to the original question I played Dishonored 1 twice mm. um, I didn't do the DLC for that I really wanted to I just didn't get around to it and uh, I started playing Dishonored 2 I got to the boat yeah like the very beginning I got to the boat where I left and uh, I did like the first mission on the, the new continent. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't pick it up after that, unfortunately. I, it's not that I lost interest. I think that um, I ended up like reformatting or something. And I don't know, but I gotta, I gotta go back and play that, the second one, because I love the first game. Yeah, I love the, the art style of it. Um, it is a very dark game. Very, and I don't mean dark as in like, lighting or anything like its tone is very dark and I love the art in it as well uh, the guy who worked on Half-Life 2 did the art for the game and it just looks absolutely incredible it's got that like Eastern European sensibility to it um, yeah 
Yeah. It does. Yeah, it's very unique. Uh, very painterly, but uh, yeah, I I totally agree with you. It's just a gorgeous game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devour Mistress wants to know when original devs ask for permission to make a sequel to their game that you own the rights to now, I don't think you guys are going to say no. Okay, so that's not a question, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends. I mean, but in most cases, like, uh, you know, a big part about what we do is to enable the games to live again. And so if the original developers, you know, come to us for any of our IP and they, they want to, uh, you know, do something with it. We're, you know, very open to that. Does Night Dice still own the rights to make an SS3 expansion in the future if other side doesn't make it? Would you get the source code for SS3? So if like System Shock 3 didn't come out, would we then have the rights to do an SS3? Um, that's a tough question. Uh, I, I suppose if the contract was terminated, but right now they have exclusive rights to do that. But um, so, uh, and then would we get the source code for SS3? Maybe. I mean, it depends. Really, we could we could request it, but uh, I'm not sure if they would be obligated to give it to us or not at that point. I know that. The, well, I won't go into it. I can't really go into it too much further than that. It's such early stages as well. Yeah. So let me catch up here. So how legal is it for developers to keep old source code from the company they used to work at? And I know this isn't a good way to keep relationships, but would it be possible for a company to leverage their licensee status to force someone to hand over said code? Um. It's not legal for developers to keep their old source code, but a lot of people will do it anyways. Um, and I'm kind of glad that some of them have because uh, without that, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of what we do. Um, and I think that The only way to really get your source code back from a developer who may have left and may have the only copy, uh, besides from being nice and maybe offering, um, sweeties, yeah, maybe offering like a money, like a some kind of compensation for it, you uh, would be legal action. I mean, if you wanted to go that route, if it was that important, let's say you spent three years developing a game, and, uh. Uh, the game came out and you wanted to do a remaster in the future but you've lost the code I mean that code is essentially worth three years of development for the whole team and that could be millions of dollars so you know you'd want to take every every reasonable course of action to, to secure that but yeah as far as uh, somebody saving the code or saving their work after a project is over um, it doesn't belong to them legally. Uh, generally, when you sign a contract or you're working with a, a developer, um, you know, the, the big thing is that they own every bit of work that you do uh, when the project is over and you have no rights to it. Let's see. I'm going to catch up here. Um... Oh, uh, yeah, Jedi's zero, 0 said, yeah, just thinking you spent so much time getting the source to SS1 that it would be a shame if you didn't get SS3's code after it was released. Um, yeah, well, the, the developers that uh, we're working with, Other Side Entertainment, on System Shock 3, they're the ones that actually gave us the code to System Shock 1. Um, so I'm sure that if we requ if we requested it just for preservational purposes or to archive it, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure that they would probably oblige. Uh, one of the things, I know that we were we wanted to use the same engine, but it just didn't work out because uh, we had done so much work already that if we could save them any time with 
the work that we had done, um, we wanted to give that to him because it helps us all. Uh, but we're not using the same engine anymore. So that's kind of off the table. Um, too many credits. Do you guys at least know if other side is also using Unreal 4 for SS3? And no, I know that they're not using Unreal 4. Um, Barack the Wicked, will you guys release the SS1 soundtrack remastered with the SC55 in lossless format on... And then it's start out. Uh, we are putting together a remastered soundtrack for the game um, just for our for our own purposes just so that we can release it um, it won't be included with um, the remake or anything like that but we are we are kind of cleaning up the soundtrack so it will um be more listenable like it'll you can listen to it as songs as opposed to how it was originally um implemented in the in the original engine uh dan did you try the underworld ascendant backer alpha i did but I only played it for about five minutes, and then Larry said, I need this doing. So <laughs> I didn't get around to it, but I will make time for it when I can. Right, Barathaben, I hope I'm pr pronouncing that right, he says that uh, I have just tested the Underworld Ascendant Backer Alpha, and it's still hard to tell how it's going to be. I feel like it is not indicative of the final gameplay. They have two levels done but are not complete or feel complete in terms of what are in it. Fairly positive they will be subject to a lot of change. Stealth does not play a huge role yet and there are limits to weapons and spell casting you can use and do. Yeah. Um, well, it's a pre-alpha. Yeah. Um, I'm not but going to... But the game to... is going to come out in September, apparently. Yeah. I'm not sure if naming the pre-alpha... I'm not... I don't think pre-alpha might be the best name for it, in my opinion. Um, they could have chosen a better name for it, I guess. But from what I played of it, the one thing that did kind of alleviate some of my personal worries were uh, performance. Because um, I was looking at the trailers and I'm looking, and I was just thinking this game doesn't look as if it's kind of behaving very well. But I played the pre-alpha and I was immediately kind of just, okay, this is performing really well on my machine. So um, that was that was the one thing that I was worried about. But it looks good now. Uh, Devour Mistress uh, says, how did you guys react when you heard War Inspector return to game making just because of SS3 and Underworld Ascendant? How did you react, Daniel? <laughs> um, I reacted. Um, this is again my personal opinion, but I I was thrilled, but I was thinking he hasn't worked on much in a while, so I hope he's still got that kind of you know frosty. Met, yeah, I, ho I hope he's going to stay frosty. Um, because I think the last game he worked on was Epic Mickey, two. And that was six years ago, eight years ago. So, yeah, um, that that was just my kind of personal thought about it. How about you, Steve? Um, yeah, I think I kind of had the same reaction. I was just like, oh, well, that's really cool. I mean, he's, you know, credited with creating some of the greatest games of all time, and he's returning to those games or to, to one of those franchises. So um, for him to kind of come out of retirement in that way, uh, it says a lot about uh, his commitment to it, right? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's a really good sign. Wow, that does not match up at all. Oh. Uh, duh. It helps if I'm looking at the right floor. Okay. Um, okay. One, two, three. That should be six units high. If it's not, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> nope, it is 600 units high, and everything is good. Six girth units? Girth Sorry. units? Um... <laughs> What did I say? did I say did I say that? No, I said Oh. I said that. <laughs> um Yeah, 600 girth units and everything's good. Uh any progress on those try up mugs talked a while about a while back. No, we haven't made any progress on that yet. Um <laughs> We're kind of holding off on any more merch until um probably till the game's a bit closer to launch but um i did still have kind of tentative plans to do a re-release of the big box edition of the original system shock with our source port inside of it oh my ice cubes have melted um but i'm not we're we're kind of taking a back seat on that for a little while Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Do you guys think any of your existing catalog or future releases could see new light on Nintendo Switch? That'd be uh, nice. I know. Yeah, we. De I know the guys were are dying to get uh, Turok one and Turok two on Switch. Um. System. Oh my God! System Shock two on Switch would be really cool. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What about Strife on Switch? I think that'd be interesting. Um, yeah, could be. Could use a little love, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a few new sprites here and there to pretty up the place. Uh, Devour Mistress asks, have you considered asking Other Side and Spectre for notes about original image of SS and how to remake it to modern audience, or do you have your own independent image in mind? Uh, we did have a, a number of conversations with him, specifically uh, Paul Nurath and Warren Spectre about System Shock, and um, I think you can actually watch uh, one of our past developer streams from the Kickstarter, I think, where we played through System Shock 1, or a big part of it, and we had Paul and Warren in the stream, and we and they basically just talked about System Shock the whole time, about why they chose to do certain things. And um, it was pretty interesting, but yeah, they, they're, they've been available to us uh, if we have any specific questions or if we would like their feedback. Uh, which has been re really nice. Too many buttons, it just wouldn't work on Switch. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Dark Gen X, yeah, that's that's the <laughs> that's the thing. Maybe the game will ship with its own keyboard. <laughs> A Nintendo Labo keyboard. Uh, tin kelp. Let me see if I can find a link. Tin kelp. I know it's on our YouTube channel, and it should be in one of our category. Playlists, it's gotta be in 
do 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 do. Was it was it the 24 hour Kickstarter live stream? Maybe. Let's see. Final hours. Mm, uh, interview with original System Shock devs. I think that's it. It's like three hours. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is it. So I will, I will post that link. I can make that room a little bit bigger and get away with it. I know that our developer on uh, the System Shock source port is, he's pretty adamant about uh, porting the game to VR. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Barack the Wicked wants to know if we're afraid of a console version of the System Shock Remaster would potentially uh, be handicapped because of the controllers. Uh, I don't think so. Um, the way that we're designing it, uh, it should it should be pretty playable. Um, I know Daniel, didn't you release like one of the very first Steam controller configurations for System Shock Two? Yeah. Um, oh. I forgot about that. Uh, yes, I did. Um, it was just my own personal thing not anything night dive related but um did i, I ever tell you what uh what became of that i i'm not even sure if i did i went to uh i think it was the steam dev days and they had reporters and they had the gaming press there and maybe this was gdc but we got invited to the steam booth because they were showing off how you could play System Shock 2 using the Steam controller, and uh, Gabe Newell was actually playing the game. Oh! Using your controller bindings. Really? Really. You're not just saying that, are you? No, no, it's on the internet. There's a, there's a video of him playing it. Wow. That's... That's really, really cool. That's made my day, is that? <laughs> That's cool. Oh, really? That's, he that's was really sitting cool. there and he's like, he's like, look, you can even play a game from 1998 on <laughs> 99 on uh, using the Steam controller. That's really cool. I had no idea about that. Yeah, let me see if I can find that video for you. Top 10 Gabe Newell facts. I'm not sure. Uh, let me see here. Here it is. Uh, maximum PC. Yeah, the funny thing was they they asked us permission. They're like, hey, we really love your... your um, uh... Probably just mind melting here. Um, your controller configuration settings, and we want to know if we can give away like a hundred copies of System Shock Two to other developers to to use as an example of like how to use the Steam controller. Right. And I was like, and I was like, yeah, go for it. And so they did. And then uh, I found out that they also gave those developers like a free steam controller hmm. nice and i was like where's my steam controller and they're like, oh <laughs> shoot we totally forgot we're sorry and they like they uh expedited a, a steam controller to my house <laughs> wow <laughs> like where's mine where's, where's my steam controller <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I posted the link to the to the interview that uh, Gabe did. I believe they're playing System Shock 2 in that in that video. So, 
I knew about the video, but I had no idea that it was my controller configuration being used in that. And I hadn't, <laughs> I hadn't been told this until now. Uh, that's re that's oh. really cool, though. Mm. Any thoughts on Linux gaming as a whole and the future of the Vulkan API? Uh, I know for a fact that Vulkan is being implemented into our Kex engine. Yes. As a rendering option, right? It is, that's correct. Um, and... Linux gaming. I don't really have... I know that Linux gamers are a very passionate community. And... Um, they love it when uh, when we support the operating system, and we're 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 working harder at that. Um, we've got somebody on our team that's specifically creating Linux ports of things for us. Uh, just recently, we we released uh, Turok one on Linux. Yes, Is that right. Yeah. Um. Our we... mistress, yes. Uh, we have a very kind of small team, so we try and do as much as we can um, when it comes to porting to other platforms. But like Steve said, we are getting better at it. You know when the uh, the little window shakes, uh, yeah, in the stream. You know what it reminds me of is the way that the Canadians talk in South Park. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like the same jiggle frequency. I'm not your friend, guy. I'm not your guy, buddy. I'm not your buddy, pal. <laughs> I'm not your pal, friend. Our mistress wants to know, with modern engines, are you afraid that modders will make your game adults only or AO with their mods? Let's be realistic, mod support or not, they will most likely make a stripper showdown someday for your version. <laughs> uh, you know what? Modders will be modders. <laughs> uh, I'm not, like, really concerned with that as long as it's, you know, I don't know. There's a there's a fine line, right? But uh, generally, you can't stop modders from, from no. doing what they do. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Speaking of Turok, will the 2.0 update be coming to GOG soon? Um, I don't know what the status of that is. I know that it's there's good there was like a little bit of bug fixing first yeah what the idea is um, we put it out on Steam and Steam is quite easy for us to um, upload new builds to so what we're doing is we're kind of fixing up that version and then when it's polished enough um, we can um, hand it over to GOG um, to be on there. It won't take too long. I am going to have a discussion with the guys tomorrow because tomorrow is when we have our um, kind of meeting with those guys, kind of weekly meeting. So um, we're going to discuss it and try and get it sorted out and um, what we want to do. It shouldn't take too long. Yeah, that's pretty much the reason why anything generally is updated or released on Steam first is because we have pretty much instantaneous control over uploading new builds and bug fixes and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like Daniel said, that just makes it really easy. We could just go, we can go click, 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 upload the new version and we can test it and uh, and that's that. But with any of the other platforms that we support, it's a, it's a little more involved. And so we'd rather just do it on one platform, get it right, fix it, and then deploy it everywhere else after that. And also, uh, we're a very small 
uh, team uh, for that project. Um, they have a lot of things going on, um, so we try and make the best use of their time as possible. Um, so we 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 will get around to things. It's just you know we're a small we're a small team and yeah. One, two, three, four in that direction. This is a very so fancy Dan, you, room I'm doing. You've got about five minutes left here before we hit our two hour mark. Oh, yeah, I do. So, if there's any last questions, excuse me, please ask, <laughs> ask them now. <clears throat> and then I gotta. I'm gonna go run to the post office. Do, 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 that way. Okay. No, that'll be 400. Are we planning on doing another audio dev stream again anytime soon? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> when we when we when uh, John has uh, some more work to do, we've kind of put audio on hold until we get a lot of mechanics uh, really not uh, nailed down. Oh. You want a raffle, huh? You want a raffle. Um, I forget how to start this. Like, moo, it's like a moo bot thing. Sh should have wrote it down. We could raffle off a, off a game. Could do. One, two, uh, three, four. Sorry. Then we got this. You say that, blah, blah, blah. I always forget how to do that. Okay, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I have opened up the raffle, so if you want to enter for a game code, uh, do exclamation point raffle, and you will be entered. And Dan, let's pick a game. What do you want to? What should we raffle off here? Ooh, hmm. How about Tex Murphy? Tex Murphy pack. The whole, yeah. The whole collection. Yeah. Be pretty awesome. It's a big. It's a lot of games. We haven't talked about Tex Murphy enough. Yeah, or Tex Murphy. I could go for some chocolate soup right now. <laughs> the the uh, the guys that do the Tex Murphy games are really awesome. I love those guys. Tex. Murphy complete pack. Let's do it. We will continue the raffle for a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. And I will close it in one minute. So please enter. I'm just going to do a lighting build and then sit and look over the view. I am sad that I cannot enter the raffle. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Steve. <laughs> no. Steve, please, no. We won a real raffle today. Well, not that this isn't real, but <laughs> we won um, a raffle at our local pet store. <laughs> oh. And uh, we get... Um, it was like a, a hundred dollar store credit for a certain brand of treats and food snacks. 
for the pooch. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let us close this raffle. It's closed and we will draw here in just a moment. Can I get a drum roll? That was pretty weak. What? But okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have an actual drum. Oh, uh, Jedi Zero Zero, you have won the raffle. <laughs> nice. So let me get you that key. I think I whispered. Uh oh. Did I not whisper? Oh, that's public. Okay, well, here's the deal. If Don't. he <laughs> is going to do that, if he, if he puts that code in and it's already used, <laughs> I'll send him another one. <laughs> we will track the person down uh, who used that code. And I will find you <laughs> and I will punish you. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be taken, I guarantee it. One of these one of these people, one of these very trustworthy people. <laughs> I knew it. I knew I was going to do that. How come when I did this it uh it didn't do the thing? Oh my god. How did I manage to mess that up? Because I'm not the one that usually does this. <laughs> Where's Kali? Where's I'm Kali? Not the community manager. I'm, I'm just the lowly CEO. I don't know how to twitch. <laughs> Where's Kali? We need, we need a grown up. Oh, oh my goodness. We need a grown up. You know what? It makes for a good stream. Everybody <laughs> loves games. You should just, like get 20 keys and just throw them in chat and be like you get a key and you get a key and you get a key and everyone gets a key and everyone gets a key oh man I want to know if that first one got taken you know what here's the deal if Jedi 00 Oh, 10 cal. I know how to do it now. I just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if he, if Jedi's redeems that code and it works and it proves that everybody was trustworthy, I will hand out some more keys. How's that sound? Try always trying it now. <laughs> oh. I think we have the best stream on Twitch. What do you think, Dan? Yes. I think it's the best. It did. Oh, oh, he's trying it. Just so know it works. Toy Dragonite agrees we have the best stream. I like that. I'm getting a Twitch tutorial. He's trying it now. Did it work? I bet somebody that whoever took it, if somebody did take it, it's probably like, oh. He just, he took, excuse me, <laughs> he's using a controller to type it in. I hey, maybe. I want to know if he's trying, because I already sent him a replacement one. I, one sec. Oh, Steam is updating. He still no, hasn't. Oh, no. no. I don't know if I can take this suspense. Tension is real. Yep, everybody's like, oh, jeez. I, I, I need... Where's Toothless? Toothless? Oh. Come here. Oh. What have I done? Oh, the, ten the tension. It's so weird. Yeah, it's pretty funny.
Oh, so, oh no! no. <laughs> Disappointing. You've made Toothless sad. How could you? Boo, whoever you are, you suck. Boo, you suck. Alright, well, okay, so Jedi's, I did whisper you another key. Let me, I mean, that one has to work, because that one, I didn't, you know, I didn't make public. But you know what? I love you guys and girls so much. I'm going to do a couple here. Mm -hmm. uh, first come, first serve. Oh really? Okay. Get your get your steam ready. Here's oh, do the we? First one. Uh, oh, do we do that thing where we replace like one number with like an asterisk, and you have to guess the number? Oh, we'll do that with uh, this one, the second one. Yeah. You'll so. Just have to yeah. So one one th uh, number will be replaced by an asterisk. You have to go through and find what the number is. Yeah, somebody's got to figure this one out. Oh no, I did that one on purpose. Devour mistress. That one is that one is just a free for all key up there. There's not even a a, a contest. But I like this. I like what Daniel suggested. All right. Yep. Yeah, so the, there's an asterisk, and it, it's a number between uh, zero and nine. That's a good idea, Daniel. You've, you've done. Or you should be in charge <laughs> of the Steam keys. I've seen a few streams or like giveaways where they, I think PC Gamer do it, I think, I'm not sure, but they remove one number. It's like, go guys, go. I like this. Devour Mistress says, you publish a redeem key in public chat and not expect it to be redeemed within five seconds? <laughs> well, you know, they are watching the Night Dive Studio stream and we hold our viewers to a higher standard. <laughs> I, was just I hope some... they're out there playing Tex Murphy and they feel shame. <laughs> I, w I, I was just amazed that it went so quickly. It's like somebody already had the Steam window open to redeem a code just in case on the off chance that something did happen. Yes, Jedi Zero Zero got the key. Don't worry, I I took care of him. Did any? Okay, who got the the third key? Or shit, I. Oh, excuse me, the fourth key. <laughs> There's language in front of the Dragonite. Oh, it was got. Then we got it. Oh. All right. Well. You know what? I'm feeling very generous. Let's do one more, and then we'll call it a stream. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. All right. We need 30 other keys now. <laughs> now you get one more there, and it's it, the, the asterisk thing. I'm surprised we don't have a lot more people uh, watching these streams. Granted that we give out a lot of games on them. Well, to be fair, I think our viewer numbers just went up by five because I think the message has spread that, oh my god, the CEO <laughs> is giving away free keys. <laughs> All right. There's two. Dang it. Yep. Wow, that was pretty quick. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for streaming us with us. And uh, yeah, Dan, if you've got any... Parting words? Parting words, words of wisdom, yeah, things. Um, yeah. Wise word of advice. If you're ever lost in the woods, don't wipe with poison ivy. <laughs> Not exactly what I was looking for, but it'll do. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you next time. Bye. See ya.